it captured a kind of Irishness, Irish humour. More, it's more than that, but a kind of specific Irish humour that you'd rarely see on screen. <laughs> it was sweet and funny and uh, and ridiculous. <laughs> Just a bad dream, Your Grace. I'm Graham, by the way. We, we wrote it. Did you ever see Father Ted? Did you ever see that programme? Great. Great in Dougal 25 times. <laughs> The impact of it doesn't seem to have sort of faded in any way from what I can see. <laughs> you bastards! I liked hitting Dermot on the head with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Where your mind goes blank because, oh, you know, yeah. your head has just been frozen. The man himself. Wonderful. It was always good. It ended good. Uh, we, we stopped it before people got sick of it. Um, you know, you can't really ask for anything better, you know? Uh, I'm actually, I'm trying to find the original Father Ted script in my, uh, files. <laughs> Arthur has it if I don't. Um, Irish Lives, Father Ted Crelly. Now, this is interesting because uh, it says 1990 on it, so that means we must have written it here before even Graham had gone to London. It's actually the, uh, the original script that led to Father Ted because Father Ted started off, it wasn't a um, it wasn't a sitcom about Ted at all. It was a documentary series about six different uh, Irish characters. So Ted was just one, one of these. It's a perpetually jolly and rather sad man, that's the first description of Ted, who through some terrible accident of fate has found himself in the priesthood. Arthur understood that whole uh, language of priests, that kind of um, lightness. Good God, look at the time. I'd uh, better be going, Ted. Oh. <laughs> And you need a lift? <laughs> it was just at home, like, you know, when I was a kid, there were all these priests visiting, you know. My uncle, who was a priest, took millions of photographs, colour slides. I think that picture, that picture just sums up everything Father Ted, the spirit of Father Ted. You don't need words when, like, this is what Father Ted, the word of Father Ted is really. Come on, Dougal, it's your goal. Pearls before swine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no, it's great to come back. I, I'm kind of nostalgic by nature, so I like going back to places I haven't been for a while. We'll be visiting the old haunts, the yeah. old house. I'm kind of curious, but but uh, I'm not really a sentimentalist about about things. I uh, I um, I expect you to, live in the now. In the I moment. expect to remain unmoved. <laughs> In a, yeah, in a cold-hearted, <laughs> cynical way. I'm living in London now, <laughs> and I don't give a damn about this place. <laughs> oh, my God, is that it? Whoa! <laughs> That's a boxy car. <laughs> it's not the most action-packed exit. <laughs> this is perfect. You have a great interest in fashion, don't you, Graham? I do. I'll be dropping in there later. The other day, I checked Twitter and I, I checked the Father Ted hashtag to see what people were saying about it, and and it's great seeing all these lines come up, you know, that that mean mean something to people, you know. In fact, the other day, I just discovered one I'd forgotten, which is John and Mary. Mary says to John, "Tit face. You've got a face like a pair of tits." That's, that's beautiful writing. I think that's beautiful writing. We're it's not... been a tremendous boost to Irish culture, I would say. <laughs> well, Ted, he's probably very cold now that his towel has blown away. Do you want tea or anything yourself? No. Do you have one of those coffees? With milk, latter, pipe, style? Yeah. You know, people will say to you, oh, you look, you know, you look like Dougal. And, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's very hard to avoid. I think the voice is a, is, a, is a bigger giveaway. In terms of, like, you know, 
you know, the impact of Father Ted as well. Like, I guess it, it was it was hard just to slip back into stand-up, you know, solely just set yourself up as a stand-up comedian again and just, you know, tour as I had been doing before that. Oh, that's good, the circulation. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd get the blood flowing. I recommend that for anybody. I have Father Jack's teeth. These are the actual Father Jack's teeth, of course. So when I put them in, it puts you into character a bit, you know? Take off! Oh, okay. Here we go then from the top uh, with the window just. Oh, yeah, don't. Uh, a bit. Because uh, you just found, well, oh, spell the countryside. Oh, it's passed. Stand by, Here we go. <laughs> it, it's, it's a shame Pauline's not here. Um, I'm sure she would have plenty of insights uh, and observations about our time together. Um, but I kind of understand the reasons why she, she isn't. Uh, uh, I, you know, I think that's that's fair enough. I mean, you know, she's she's closely identified with the with the Mrs. Doyle character, um, and as a uh, an actress, she she wants to um, she wants to get away from that. All this wealth of material and photos. Yeah, there was a wonderful innocence about about Dougal and Father Ted that kind of made them very endearing. There he is. The man himself. Wonderful. <laughs> I've never seen um, kicking Bishop Ben up the arse. I've never watched it. I see it in shop windows, and I, you know, at home you go through the room, it's on, and I've been on planes when it's on, but I've never actually sat down and watched it because I find that too, too painful. Because we had such fun doing it. It was just uh, such a blast. And I think he had a, a great career ahead of him when he sadly left us. It's great that he's still there in terms of audiences, you know, who, who have yet to discover Father Ted, because uh, it was, I think, one of the great comedy performances. We're usually in kind of November and we do the stuff outside the house. We'd be here, I mean, one series was ten episodes, one series was six, one was eight, so, you know, two weeks to three weeks we'd be here. I think it's somewhere around, I think it's somewhere around here. He said it was the one at the end. There it is, Ted, look, it's huge! <laughs> We're here, Father. Thank hey, God. Do you know? Do you know what was filmed here? Okay. Do you know where we filmed it? Uh, you filmed it a bit back there where the bench is. There. Really? Yeah. Father yeah. Ted, we watched him many a day. Here. What? You, yeah. you actually saw it being shot? We did, yes. Did you? Yes. Good lord. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. We have a mobile home on the side, so. Oh, I see. Do you remember the old one, the small little one the that they had here, here, the one that they rocked from side to side? Did it tip over? I forget. Did it, it did, tip? yes, we it did, tipped yeah. it over, that's yes. That's right, that's right. Yes. So you saw yeah. it being filmed? It's There's probably no one in Ireland who hasn't seen an episode or loves everything about it. That dog, he probably loves it. Did you ever see Father Ted? Did you ever see that program? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I have two boxes in the attic full of these tapes, you know, and most of them are quad splits, you know, that's a four-way split for the studio. I've also got, you know, from the locations, I've got the location rushes for all this, of, you know, VHS tapes. And I haven't had this stuff out in years. Let's play some Scrabble. Yeah, brilliant. Did you bring the travel Scrabble? I brought the Norman Scrabble and the travel Scrabble tape. <laughs> Leslie, yes, you could hear his voice starting to go there, didn't you? It's really copy of Playboy. <laughs> Because the audience can see all this and hear it, you know. And sometimes it's good, good to let the audience hear that stuff. It just adds to the fun. Well, you just had all this time, because I wasn't involved in any of the technical aspects, to kind of come up with more gags, you know? So it was like, uh, this is 
I remember we were in a field and we saw some cows and that's and that's and that's where the near far away thing came from, you know. Which Maybe is, the which most is, famous which joke. Which has become the, the mm. big joke of, yeah. of the show. So the audience can't see that yet. That's the main is what the audience see. It's also interesting when you, as soon as you cut to it that you get laughed. Okay. Five seconds, four, three. <laughs> Plastic cows on a priest's table is funny. Okay, it? one last time. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. <laughs> I love the wave, where the, the laughter is in a wave, it takes a few seconds, you know. Small, far away. <laughs> I forget. We just wanted to create this kind of odd world that was outside of everything. And then we felt that we could, we could have a free reign. We wanted to make an Irish sitcom with all the kind of insanity of the young ones and the, and the cleverness of of Blackadder and, and the kind of farce elements of Faulty Towers, you know? These were the things that we grew up loving. You but know? also the, the, all that Irish madness. Well, that's what gave us, our, gave us our voice, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just move it over here, it's what, six feet? God, it's lovely out. <laughs> Craig Allen had to look bleak and remote and the last place on earth you want to be stuck, isn't it? Guys were never into pretty. The guys were never into let's have it looking beautiful and stuff like that. It had to be a bit shit, you know. It had to be a bit cold and damp and miserable and a place you just didn't want to hang out in for very long. But yeah, this is like uh, you know, if you're going to have a picnic on Craggy Island, then you want to find the most inhospitable kind of landscape you can find. So this is this is perfect, really. It's almost like this was Ted's best bet. <laughs> On top is it? And roll, please. Great. Here we go. It was shot, I'd say, a little bit crudely. Just in nature of the beast, the amount of stuff we had to get through. This is my fucking spot. Get the fuck off. There would be times on location when, you know, I know the cameraman would like another 10 minutes to light it, and I go, it's not going to get any funnier. And also with the guys, they come out in the rehearsal scene in the cold. It's kind of funny. You better shoot it the next time, because you're going to make them rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it. By the time you shoot it, it's not going to be funny anymore. And particularly those guys, because they weren't actors, it was good the first two or three times. That's why, you, you know, you rarely see us going past three or four takes. I guess Frank and Pauline had, had more acting experience. And myself and Dermot, we were like, we were, we were coming from a, you know, strictly a, a, com a comedy background. Certainly to begin with, I wouldn't have been, you know, a very confident or assertive person. But, you know, I think I had an inner confidence, like just in terms of trusting my instincts to some degree. I used to kind of zone out a bit um, about a half an hour before the recording and kind of become Dougal in a way, but not in any kind of, um, you know, methody kind of way. It, it's funny, once you put on the costume, once you put on the gear, I used to become Dougal. <laughs> I suppose the surprise from someone from the outside looking in would be that actually Frank was an actor. You know, so he had the Irish Times crossword and, you know, all those actory type things. I used to look at myself in the mirror and say, geez, who's that, you know? <laughs> he had the pus coming out of his ears and one milky eye and, and stuff in his nose and, and, and odd lesions and things going on. You didn't want to get beside uh, Frank Kelly at breakfast after he'd been made up because uh, bits of this, these flakes, would start to sort of drop off. And if they landed on your toast. <laughs> Jack is basically the kind of really evil, unpleasant side of the, the church. The kind of the side that all our all our dads would have stories about being beaten up by someone like Jack. You know, that was our little tribute to that kind of What's that? scumbag. Uh, Mrs. Doyle, uh, you left the cooker on. All right, Father, I'll be there in a sec. I, I met this lady once who was talking about Ted, and she said, "There's not much for women in it, is there?" No, I thought, well, yeah, there is. It's Mrs. Doyle. She's one of the best female characters in comedy. Hello, fathers. Hello, Hello Mrs. Mrs. Doyle. Too often in comedies, um, you see female characters, and their only comic characteristic is that they're commenting on uh, how silly the men are being. And we didn't want that. We wanted a female character who's funny in herself, who 
who was who had a very strong comic personality, and that's going to be negative. Out. Get out, Ardle. Get out, Ardle. You know, for, I mean, for Dermot, you know, he's never had to he's never had to do a script. He's never had to go out and perform a script, kind of word for word, as somebody else has written it. So. The, the burden, if you like, of being an actor was actually quite a big one for him, you know. Father O'Rourke has that house. Ah, oh, fuck, sorry. Well, we were all very sympathetic to the load that Dermot had, because Dermot had an enormous number of lines to, to learn, which I didn't think at the beginning he would be capable of, because he wasn't trained as an actor, he had an experience. And, of course, things often go wrong, as you know, and, and <clears throat> when you're doing a live show. And that's when Dermot really came into his own, because he was the master of stand-up. During breaks in the recording, or when we were going from scene to scene, he'd start messing around with the audience and everything like that. And he'd, sometimes he'd try and pull me into that, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't come out of the, the kind of mindset I was in. Because uh, I think it would have, I think it would have spoiled it for me and, 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 and for the audience as well. Uh. <laughs> How to pull an altar boy, oh, that sort of stuff. <laughs> With one finger. I did have a bit of a comedy crush on you, though. <laughs> I did. I felt giddy when you were around. Stop it. No, it's true, because you were so funny. It was a, great, a synthesis of two different kinds of people. The kind of youthful, terrific uh, enthusiasm of, of, of Graham and Arthur's kind of older wisdom. It's just a really good dynamic, you yeah, know, but for also, it wasn't like, I don't think it's like, the chalk and cheese thing. I think Graham and myself had the same sense of humour. I think that synth synthesis is what produced the chemistry of what makes Father Ted a success. There is the house, the craggy island house. Hello, I feel, I feel dog. oddly excited. Yeah, it's great to see you again. Yeah. Ah. So. Hello, house. It's bigger than I remember. This is the Ted house, but uh, it's probably only the Ted house from the outside. Once you get inside, it's very different, I think you'll find. Let's see who's in. <laughs> There's Hello. nobody here. <laughs> Hello, Cheryl. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you? Do you mind if we, uh, if we invade? Just oh, yeah. We'll have a look around. Lovely to see it's you. Good to see you again. Do you want to go in here? Do, yeah. yeah. Come on in for a cup of tea. Kind of life change, really, isn't it? To suddenly be running oh, yeah. a, a yeah. tourist attraction. But there's many people coming as used to. Come. Oh my God! Honest to God, it, there really is. <laughs> Honestly, I can't lie. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is non-stop. Like you wouldn't walk yeah. around in your undies and your bra. <laughs> well, I, well, I wouldn't do that. Anyway. You know. <laughs> but I had so many people at the gate, right? Yeah. So I said, what would I do? Yeah. So I said, oh, maybe I'll make a little tea room. So um, that's what I've started. So I have people booked in at five. Hello there. Hi, Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Who are we? Hiya. Hello. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, very yeah. good. Yeah. Super. We live here all the time. <laughs> We've never left. Um, why did you want to see the house? It's just, you know, the scene I'm telling you, I suppose it's the same as... I don't as... watch it. I don't get it. Good for you. Good for you. You're not supposed to get it. <laughs> I just ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What did you say? There she is now. There she is now. Come on, let's just I'm walk over here. I'm going to ask her why she doesn't like... Let's just walk over I'm here. I'm going to ask her why she doesn't like what kind of program she likes. Yeah. You're here just to see the house? Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Where are you where are you all from? Australia. Australia, really? Wow. The production company definitely didn't fly you over especially. <laughs> no, <laughs> just no. to fool this us. Just a flake, absolute flake. Just to make yeah. us look good. Yeah. <laughs> see that little girl? She doesn't like the show. <laughs> <laughs> she rails against it. Yeah, we're trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to do. <laughs> revenge. <laughs> It was filmed in 94, I think, the series I did. But it wasn't probably until 98, 99, when people sort of started recognising me, you kind know, of Father Stone, you know? Ardell's famed thing, isn't it? 
He worships your father. Really? Oh, he did this one for you. <laughs> the one I, I was allegedly did of myself and father's head. Encapsulating my obsession with him, I think. Uh, it's very hard to know what to expect about an audition, but I mean, I could, I could see from the script that it suited me perfectly, because, I mean, I'm, I said, I'm not, I'm not a sort of a versatile actor. I'm, um... <laughs> having a bath. It's just that I wanted to go to the toilet. Oh. Right, well, go ahead. Well, I thought at first I had to take my underpants off as well, so I was a bit uneasy about that. But, um... Because I didn't know about, you know, sort of how shooting cameras, how they could sort of fake it that, it, that you didn't actually take your underpants off as well. I remember the producer, Jeffrey Perkins, saying he thought it was going to be huge. And the winners are Jeffrey Perkins, Declan Lowney, Graham Linehan, and Arthur Matthews for Father oh, Ted! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Well, first you see Jeffrey Perkins there, the producer of the show. The two writers are Graham Linehan and Arthur Matthews. And the director is Declan Lowney. Can't oh. talk about Father Ted without talking about Jeffrey. He's the one who, who found this house. I, th I always think Jeffrey's the heart of the show. Yeah. You know, if there's a kind of warmth and a kind of compassion and a sweetness to the show, then Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's the man responsible. I don't think Ted would have happened without Jeffrey because I don't think the guys would have got the crack at it. It was a, it was a mock documentary they'd written as, as a one-off and there was no, you know, that wasn't going to be commissioned by anybody. Uh, and Jeffrey felt sitcom was the way to go with this. Let's dramatise it. Let's, you know. Uh, so as far as I know, that was, the, you know, the thrust of Jeffrey's approach to it. He just gave me such confidence, you know, to try things and to do stuff during the rehearsal and on the nights, on the recording nights. He'd just have a little word in your ear, uh, or, or, or he'd, 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 he'd kind of overrule the director sometimes, and he'd just kind of go, you know, no, no, no just let him do what he's doing. Let him do what he's doing. You know. So and I, like for me, who didn't know what I was doing. Uh, frankly, um, this was great. This was such a boost to the confidence uh, that someone of his stature um, took such an interest and, 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 and made such an investment in, in me. But he also, you know, recognised in Graham and Arthur that there was something very valuable and precious there and he protected that, you know, gave them their head as much as they needed to um, and then reined him in when he thought he had to. But, you know, I, th I, thought, I thought that was a perfect marriage. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what's funny? Um, God. Um, what's funny is Father Dougal sitting with a nun and pausing for a very, very long time and then turning to her and saying, so then you're a nun. Graham taught me that. That's funny. <laughs> It's surreal. It's an extraordinary experience, really, to be back in the territory. I haven't been back in, the, in the country, this kind of countryside since, and it's very special. It's a very different kind of countryside. You know? I'm kind of hoping to see it for the first time, because, like, when you're doing a show like Father Ted at the time, it's, it's also intense. You leave very early in the morning and you get home very late at night. You're working quite hard while you're there. It's true. So I actually yeah. don't remember the landscape at all. I'd say it's probably a Georgian design. Oh, there it is now. There you go. There you go. Now, you do expect a statue there in the gateway. You do, don't you? Yeah, you do expect to see Dermot getting, out, getting into the car. Yeah, yeah. We'll get out. Have a look anyway. Mm. Oh, my God. Look at it. The statue's gone, of course. It's been quite some time. It just seems very barren without loads of priests swarming around a, a, a hot water dispenser. It does. Doesn't it? Yeah. I have the happiest memories of scenes out there near the wall taking place, of people chasing each other and yeah. beating each other and running, running around the side of the house. I remember kicking a ball around with Father Demo. That's right, around the side That's of the house. That's one of the highlights of my life. That's right. <laughs> it's one of your best sporting achievements, really. Yeah. yeah. A prévu. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. My goodness. Hiya. 
Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hey. Yeah. Good to see you. Hello. Oh, it's lovely to see you. How are you? No, we didn't. How are you? Very well. How are you going? How are you going? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Will you have a cup of tea? Uh, well... I go on. <laughs> Take a bun then. Mm, lovely. Are these your own buns? Did uh, did did uh, either of you feel uh, the roles were you know too associated with you? Did did did, did it become a bit of a, a pain at times? So uh, you well, know, the early hysteria time. was quite hard to take. Yes, but it settled down then. People became more you know, more used to the show, and uh, they weren't as invasive. You know. Yeah, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit irritating that people don't appreciate my genius in other areas, <laughs> you know, and that they purely see you in terms of this, you know, mm, yeah. character. Like. Mm. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, <laughs> it's flattering. Mm. There are worse things that could happen in life. Really. Exactly. Pauline used to say that she, she didn't know whether to be mm. cheered up or annoyed when people yeah. recognised her as Mrs Doyle, you know? Yeah. So, I guess she's still wrestling with that. <laughs> I want to be associated with Dougal forever. <laughs> so, that's why I'm here. More ice? The cold baths were, were dreadful. But they paled into insignificance compared to being dragged along by the tractor. And, of course, that was a minor inconvenience compared to the uh, crazy golf with Father Stone. Oh, and, yeah. You know, oh, that day, that was a near-death death experience. What about uh, when the sewage truck opened on top? Well, of I was know. coming to that. <laughs> 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 that was horrendous. You were very I mean, cross that, so that day. You and well, Dermot were very yeah, cross. Well, and, and Dermot in particularly. Again, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. That was that I was just so painful. It was like you know oh, yeah. where your mind yeah. goes blank because of, you know, yeah. your head has just been frozen by a jet of oh, yeah. freezing cold. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But I feel, I feel bad language. because we were being kind of smart arses there mm. because Dermot had said the previous series, well, you do to me next time, cover me in slurry. And we said, oh, yeah, brilliant idea. We went and we wrote it. And, uh, and I felt bad about that. you have to call someone's house once? You were marooned. Yeah, I had no choice. It was either, you know, death or I called at the door of the farmhouse and I said, please, can I have a bath? And they, <laughs> and they gave me a bath. It's a, it's a friend of Pat and Cheryl. Right. And he said that they've kept the bar of soap. <laughs> If you want to meet priests your own age, listen in on the latest gossip or simply have a bit of a laugh. Then call Priest Chat back and speak to priests you want to know. The anti-church thing that people say it has, that was never there for me and I don't think it was ever there for the guys. But I knew when I read it that I, I identified with it, I got it, it struck a chord. You know, uh, I remember priests coming who would come and visit sometimes on a Sunday and would sit in your parlour for four or five hours drinking tea. I mean, I would have to keep doing the tea thing over and over again. You know, it was, I, it was just, it was in our psyche. We knew about that stuff. I just found it easy to inhabit him. I just liked him so much. I thought I really have to try and bring this man uh, in all his horribleness to the public. <laughs> I did have the experience of, of going to the Christian Brothers uh, for uh, my education, for want of a better word. And um, there I met some very strange uh, people indeed. You address me by my proper title, you little bollocks! I just remember those voices and those faces and those kind of, the kind of sadistic, pitiless way they made fun of me. And this, <clears throat> the voice that eventually became um, Bishop Brennan, sort of, that's where it came from, a great, I guess, sense of getting my own back. Don't try my patience, Grilly! You kick me up the ass! Try to deny it, and I will have you fed to the dogs! I always felt, it, in some way, it put a human face in the church. It humanised these people. You know, monstrous as and all as some of them are, as, you know, Father Jack is an outrageous creation. But, like, it humanised them. Father Ted is so downtrodden. He, He's always uh, so hard-pressed. I mean, you know, but he's a decent guy at the end of the day. He doesn't want to be bothered. He just wants to kind of... He an wants, easy life. Wants with easy a bit life. of kind of materialistic treats every now and then. Yeah. And he's just totally non-spiritual. Sounds like you're writing we used to say, oh, poor Ted. Yeah, we used to say that all the time. We would be laughing and then we'd just pause and we'd go, oh, poor Ted. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> Dougal and Ted are kind of dumb and dumber, I think. You know, they're Laurel and Hardy. They're, they're, they're a classic double act. 
You can't really imagine one without the other, I don't think. Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, you know, no matter how far back you go in, 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 in literature, you're going to find these two together. Done with this sort of thing. Careful now. <laughs> anyway, you go up to bed. I'll be up in a minute. All right. Good night, lads. You'll be up in a minute? <laughs> yes, we sleep together. Anyway, who else do you know? My name is Morris O'Donoghue, and uh, I played Hello? Father Dick Byrne. He was the evil side of Father Ted, a uh, slimy sort of side of him. Dick Byrne was there. One of his roles as a character was to bring out Ted's incredibly childish side. Yes, exactly. You know? I'm sure we'd do just as well as you would. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we 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 would. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. No, you wouldn't. Times thousand. Yes, thanks. No comebacks. But I subsequently heard the lads mentioned it to me, and and my agent said that the it was a close run thing between myself and Dermot. Definitely, he was our second choice. That's why that's why why Craggy Rugged Island existed because they were our second choices for everybody. And all I can say is thank God Dermot got it because he's quintessentially Father Ted. Oh yeah, it's Dougal then. Everybody wanted to be in Father Ted, and there was a possibility of getting it, and like a real possibility uh, as a comedian to get a part because the characters that were written were sometimes suited to comedians. Yeah. Which one do you prefer, Oasis or Blur? Like, for example, the character of Father Damo, I played it over the top, to be honest. It's not, it's not like subtle acting or anything like that <laughs> that um, a proper actor would do. I'll be in the middle. <laughs> I wonder, are there any Irish comics who weren't, <laughs> who weren't in Father Ted? How badly must they feel? Because you do feel in the end, they gave everyone a go. There was a touch of paranoia in the air about, did you get the call? Did you get the call? Did you? No, I haven't heard anything of that, you know. And then, you know, get, wondering would you get an audition and then would you get the part? And there was a bit of paranoia. One or two people were left out and I think are scarred as a result. I smell wee. Where's that from? <laughs> it's this one here. This one smells of wee. <laughs> I could win an Oscar and people would still shout, oh my, oh my love, I have no willy. I love cake. Where's the jam? I smell wee. They'll f that, those lines are just going to follow me to my grave. You bastard! <laughs> Slack! Oh. Hello, Mary. What's up, Father? Oh! <gasps> oh, Father. Hello, John. Mary was just washing my hair. <laughs> she has such lovely soft hands. I remember that being quite challenging, actually, the fact that you, you, you were being absolutely spiteful and horrible and violent with each other, and then suddenly you had to pretend to be benign and loving. I, I found that <laughs> technically just <laughs> really, really hard. John and Mary was about, about, uh, about the thing in Ireland that, that seemed to be very common, which was uh, pretending everything's fine in front of a priest when, you know, and, they, and pretending that marriage is just this wonderful, rosy thing. It's keeping up appearances. Shut up, you old bitch! <laughs> They're a lovely couple, though, aren't they? John and Mary. <laughs> ah, they are all right. Ooh. There's great uh, debate about, is this absolutely mad or is this funny? And uh, I thought, no, this is going to work. I went on right to reply right and argued God. against argued against a, a second generation woman from Manchester, Man Irish woman from Manchester, who was arguing, telling me in a Mancunian accent that I was being anti-Irish. Why is it racist? Why is it stereotypical? Right, the word Irish is is just synonymous with ridiculous, stupid, you know, idiotic. I want my children to grow proud of where they've come from yeah, and their ancestors. I do too. I want, I want a country that's not so self-conscious and so intimidated by other countries that they can't have comedy programmes about themselves, that they can't make films about themselves. And I think it's, to be honest, I think it's quite a, a ridiculous argument. But the initial response was just knee-jerk. It was fear of being made, look, made to look stupid. And we were kind of, our, our, again, our argument was, if you deny 
us the chance to look stupid, like everybody else is able to look stupid, then you deny Irish actors and Irish comedians from the chance of being in something funny. As an Irish person, I never felt uncomfortable watching it. I never felt, oh, like, it's all the things, you know, there are things you'd watch in Ireland, maybe, and you'd kind of think that's very funny. I hope nobody English ever sees it. <laughs> um, but Father Ted wasn't like that. You were quite happy to sit with English people and watch um, that because it was it was sweet and funny and uh, and ridiculous, but not in a kind of cruel or malicious way. Sit down there and we'll have a bit of an old song. What can we sing? Will you sing one, Ted? <laughs> uh, no, I won't. Yeah, thanks. you will. You've a lovely voice, very like Celine Dion. <laughs> it's one of those sitcoms that just plays again and again and again, and every time it plays, it, it's a new audience. When I was just back in my school, and like these kids are 12 and 13, and they're going, oh, we love you and Father Ted. I was like, you weren't born. Like, for them, it must be like watching an old black and white film. <laughs> that old man was in Father Ted. <laughs>
stay in, in London studios shooting the show. We're going into Studio 2, where we film the show, I believe. I believe. God, it's big, isn't it? Yeah, it's much more... Um... Of course, all the here would be seats from here way back, I suppose. I mean, the thing about studio sitcoms is they're not easy to make. They're hard. They're really hard. They're, they're done under incredible pressure. Um, so there's, there's no reason to do them. There's no good reason to do them, except that I think they lead to, in the style of sitcoms we're doing, uh, funny, funnier sitcoms, you know? I mean, I, I, as Arthur says, if Father Ted was done without an audience, it would be a cold, yeah, miserable really affair. Flat. You know? It was always bit of a thrill going into the studio, seeing our sets, which had become a second home. Um, you know, you were, you were familiar with every item of furniture, and so you liked being there. These guys had really thought everything through very clearly. It all worked very well. See, it's a great credit to them that we didn't have to do everything 13 times. The thing that was interesting about doing TED and, and distinguished it from every other programme I've ever done is that usually when you're back here and the scene has stopped uh, filming, you hear the voice of the warm-up man uh, do, oh, yes. doing warm-up. That's true. Warm yeah, up. Yeah. But on TED, you heard the voice of Dermot, do, who's basically, every time they yell cut, would just walk straight out to the audience and start doing his routine, you know? And he used to drive me mental, you know? Because I was like, concentrate on the script! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I want you. <laughs> It very much had the atmosphere of a holiday camp. I mean, I think there was a giddiness about it um, that I haven't really witnessed since uh, in anything I've done. And I think it was due to the fact that we were all Irish, we were all abroad. You know, it was very good humoured. This is the oh, star's dressing room. I wonder. You feeling nervous? No. 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 <laughs> Rushing from the court. <laughs> I think by the time series three came around, um, I fully respected the writer's decision not to write anymore because they felt they had exhausted it. And, and, and I think we all felt that. We did think that's it, you know. We didn't think we could do it again. We thought we'd be repeating ourselves and, and we thought... We, we, we were really running out... We were really running out of things for Jack to do. Mm -hmm. And we were running out of ways for Dougal to be stupid. <laughs> Great news. I've been asked to go and work in America. <laughs> really? As what? <laughs> The story of the last episode as well, I mean, it's, it's kind of moving and it's kind of poignant anyway. You know, it's, 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 uh, it is a bizarre story. It's bizarre what happened. You wouldn't leave me behind, would you? <laughs> the end of the last bit of recording, symbolically, Ardell and Frank and uh, Dermot threw their colours into the audience, I think. You know, we kind of had a rap party. Uh, and it was all it was all lovely, and and then I don't know the next morning uh, got a call from Dermot's assistant John to say that you know he died died of a heart attack the night before at a, at a dinner party. It was kind of utterly shocking for about a minute, and then you know then then it kind of then you think back and you think, well, God, you know he didn't look well, and you know my father who who was a medical doctor uh, amongst other things uh, had said to me um, at the recording that Dermot didn't look well. You know. It it was quite traumatic because we'd been a very happy, busy, you know, company, and suddenly this guy was dead. The morning I heard Dermot died, I I I, I was very upset and I cried and stuff. But then, then we just stayed in shock for like, I don't know. I was I'm still in shock about it. Oh yeah, Ted. You're here to stay with me and Mrs. Doyle and Father Jack forever and ever 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 and 
I go on, Father. Have a cough. Just a little cough. Just a drop. It's twice as big. Let's go. Could take a while, Dougal. Oh, Ted. <laughs> oh. Can we hold the Can we hold the rain? Thank you. Can we took the rain off our arses? <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> Pick up, please. Hold your positions. Night, Dougal. Night, Ted. But my memory of Dermot here in this house is, and there's a room there, and there was a big yeah. fire, and uh, there was a big right. armchair, and huge fire, and Dermot yeah. sitting there, and yeah. being Dermot. Yeah. And we always said Ted was our favourite character because he was the most real. He had the most, yeah. he had the most sides to him, and the most depth. The one yeah. And I think he, you know. I think he sometimes thought that we were giving you all the gags, but we weren't. Yeah. We were, yeah. you know. And well, I don't. All, no. And Dermot always, Dermot. Well, he was, he was like. You know, he was a nervy, insecure man, and he, he mm. you know, and, and, and with poor discipline. But that's, <laughs> that's not to take away from, yeah. like, yeah. you know, what a, what, a, what a big character he was. I mean, mm. he was a big and generous-hearted character yeah, in, was, in, yeah, in lots yeah. of ways. He was very grateful and very pleased he got the opportunity in Britain because of all his frustrations in Ireland, you know. Mm. Yeah. But then... Yeah, he definitely wanted to move on and do, I think, more satirical stuff. Well, I worked with him on other things, and he, he wasn't the easiest person in the world to work with. Mm. But he was a dream to work with him, Father Ted. So it must have created some sense of security in him, you know? Patrick and Cheryl told us about an 11-year-old girl who, who, wants, who, who said, I wish I could stay here forever. It doesn't even look the same on the inside. Just, just the very fact that it's the Ted house just made made this kid, you know, hugely happy, and and that kind of got to me because I just thought, you know, the show does have a magic that, um, you know, that we didn't really realise we were we were uh, involved. We didn't really realise it would have this kind of magic that's been lasting through different generations. And yeah, the people you don't think of it when you're writing. You know, we just want to make things funny and then... We were just trying to be funny, you know? Yeah, after you, then years pass and people have a fondness for it, so that's very... People who weren't born nice. yeah. when we wrote it, you know? And that means a lot. My parochial house, see you in another ten years, maybe. Yeah, driving. Yeah, that's very smooth. Smooth. Thank you.